meiner Hinz Grandad. Hello everyone. Over the last few weeks we've been working on the roof, um, weather permitting, so this is what we've done so far. At the end of last year we had left the roof with three coats of primer, three coats of undercoat and one top coat. Um, so now we're just sanding that top coat back, cleaning it all, getting it all scrubbed up and getting the next, well we put another three coats another of three the coats top, coat, yeah. top coat. As you can hear it's a little bit windy. stood on each side of the boat and worked our way to the middle. I'm not very good with my left hand at the best of times, but holding on to the gunnels. <laughs> Carry on. <laughs> holding on to the gunnels, um, holding the camera and trying to paint with my left hand. It weren't working. Once all the painting was done and dried, we was able to lay out our solar panels and see where they actually are going to sit. Got some paint on the chimney. Yeah. have to be that close to it, can it be further up? Alright, okay. As you can see it took a lot of measuring, uh, not only just to get the panels square and lined up exactly so that they ran the, in a nice line down the boat, but also drilling through the roof of the cables. Um, it was making sure that you weren't going to hit any of the ribs that came in the roof also any cables and stuff that was there so yeah it was quite a lot of thinking and measuring to get it right yeah the one good thing is that we've left our ceiling off so far so um, we can see where the where the wires are coming through and thread them through um, yeah but really good
Once the solar panels were in place, we could then have another discussion <laughs> and work out where the plank and pole holders were going to be placed. Yeah, and any narrow boaters that are watching, um, what size pole would be best for us? Um, we talked about having a six foot, then an eight foot, but do we need any bigger than that? It's a obsession with length all the time. <laughs> size matters, mate. <laughs> <laughs> if you're going to have a pole, we'll have a big one. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I say. Now time to test out the uh, pat pending swarf catching device that Emily's <laughs> come up with. <laughs> I know, it's a good idea. Bag, bag for life. Bag for life. Yeah, look, with a bit of upturned... Uh, Gaffer tape and a hole in the middle of a bit of cardboard. Yeah, it's got to
that's the first of four I'll do that now for the solar cables. It's never a nice job ever to drill holes in your new boat, but sometimes you've just got to do it and get on with it. It's always a bit of a fear if anything goes wrong, but uh, fortunately it worked out okay. Most of you will know, but for anybody that doesn't, this is a tapping tool that you uh, use to run a thread through the steel of the boat, and it will it just cuts a thread into there so that so that you can screw a machine screw into into the boat. Um, drill it out undersized for the hole you're going to be th threading. This is going to be a an M5 screw going in here, so the tap is suited to that 4.2. So you just take your time, easing it through, trying to keep it square. If it tends to go a little bit tight on you, you just have to run it back a little bit and it clears the threads out. But yeah, just take your time with it. Ideally, you want to use a bit of cut, uh, thread cutting stuff, but uh, we didn't want to do that with the new paintwork. <laughs> So this is just a dry fit just to see if the screws actually fit in the holes and uh, it all fits all right. Um, it's, this all needs to come off to do the textured painting. We've masked out a small area just to have a little experiment with this uh, textured floor grip granules that we've got. Um, we've realised how we're doing it here is wrong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we put far too much granules in and we're pushing those lumps of granules around rather than keeping it light and smooth and keeping it going in one direction. But you live and learn.
also put in the antenna for the um, internet going through the roof so I'm just masking off that area so no textured paint goes under that glammed area so when the cable gland sticks on um, it's a nice smooth surface smooth, yeah, yeah so no rain can get through I'll make it like every day is your birthday I So what I've been doing, doing here, this is where the solar panel is going to be stuck down um, and we want like a, an edge all round um, that isn't textured, the same as up the other end um, and this is where the cable is going to go through the roof and the cable gland. So I just measured all that out and curved it so I'm just going to curve these as well just to make them look a little bit softer so that's the bit I've been doing and the bit that granddad's been doing is we've traced a a line the same shape as this all the way around there in pencil. I've got to get the masking tape now and then just put the masking tape inside that line here so that when the texture finish goes up it follows that shape all the way around the centre line. Very therapeutic and relaxing on the roof doing this uh, masking tape. At this stage, um, we was only expecting to put one coat of the anti-slip on, so we just used uh, a normal masking tape, nothing special. Um, don't do that if, you, <laughs> if you're going to do it. Um, it just leaves a sticky residue if you're going to leave it on for longer than um, just painting on and ripping it off. Yeah. I'm just putting a circle around the mushroom air vents. And that's it all masked up. So we've done them experiments at the, at the back of the boat. Um, so for the rest of it, we know that we're doing two thin coats um, and not putting so many granules in. So the non-slip additive we're using is a Hempel anti-slip pearls. Um, they're like little glass balls, hollow balls, but they don't look like that. When you open it, it just looks like powder. And when we first saw it, we thought that's not going to work. But once it's mixed up and it's on the on the roof, it, it really did make a really good anti-slip. Yeah. Just don't put too much in. Um, 
less is best really and do a couple of layers. Run. So this bit here, too many granules. This one we think we got right. We like the texture of that. And that's two thin layers. And we've also got a little bit of white spirit in there with that as well. Um, and that one's one coat. Yeah, it works really well. So now the anti-slip is uh, done, we can uh, concentrate on the handrail. And we did paint one top coat of what we used on the roof over the handrail just to see if we liked it light, but no, we're gonna go darker, um, just to hide a little bit of the dirt really. <laughs> Thank you. 
Mmm, it smells nice. So, same as the roof, um, it's symphony paints we're using again. And this one is a top coat aqua green. And we'll be using this on the sides as well on uh, in panels. just using a, an artist brush just for the the inside of the handrail because it just makes it easier to get on all the little nooks and crannies but we'll be using uh, foam rollers and uh, a tipping off brush on the top and side throughout our build we've been using different uh, sponge rollers different brushes this these are by far the best ones we've used. They seem to last ages and, uh, and and never sort of break up, these ones. They don't go soft and deform or anything like that. No, no. they're all the shape, they? Yeah, and we've treated ourselves to purdy brushes to do the tipping off. Cut one of the rollers down, well one each, um, so we could like uh, do this second coat just as a roller and uh, keep within the lines. Rookie mistake we made with putting this coat on, we had left it towards the end of the day because it had been a really hot day and the sun was uh, just about to go down and we'd, we'd done half the boat and the sun went down, the humidity dropped from the sky, went onto the paint and took the gloss away. So the next day we had half a rail that was nice and shiny and glossy and half a rail that was matte. So remember, if you're doing this, don't do it when there's a lot of humidity in the air. <laughs> <laughs> 